Hello everyone, welcome back to the conclusion of Factorio Demystified. Thank you very much to all of you who have stuck through the entire thing. And we are going to now be launching the rocket and winning, but we have to do a few other things first. I want to look at some science. Now we're currently working on Space Science Pack. This is the very last one. It's going to let us get the satellite, which is not required to launch, but if you launch a rocket with a satellite, then you actually get a thousand of the space science packs back. That's how you get that final science pack. And this is primarily for if you're going past just launching the rocket to win and doing a mega factory type of approach, because then you have all of these infinite techs, which require the space science pack and which you can just continually build up. It's more and more expensive with each one, but there is no limit to how much you can improve them. For our current purposes, we're going to note that the rocket silo is both a factory and also the silo for the rocket for it to launch. So it's actually going to build the rocket as well. We need rocket control units, we need low density structure, and we need rocket fuel. And 10 of those each to build a rocket part, and we need 100 rocket parts for this to launch. So to reduce your costs, it's very advised to just throw in your productivity modules. And now we'll only need 71 to 72 of those rocket parts in order to get this to launch. And we can see the progress gradually as we get it moving down here. We'll go ahead and hook this up, throw a couple inserters in, and then look at some of our ingredients. Now as you get towards the end of the game, it's very tempting to just scale up and scale up and scale up and increase your science so you can get through these end game techs faster. And I did do some of that. I went up to 50 science per minute as opposed to the 30 science per minute that I was doing. But you also want to keep in mind, this requires a lot of material to build the rocket. So you could scale up your other sciences so much and then not have anything left for this. Then you've got to expand more. So I also did some expansion while I was doing that build up. And at 50 science per minute, we're effectively actually getting 60 because we have the 20% productivity from the modules in our labs. And I've balanced this out so we have enough of this to finish a rocket in 20 minutes. The reason being, that will give us 1,000 science packs of the space science packs that will be coming in. And so that would be the same if you divide it out. 1,000 divided by 20 minutes is 50 of those per minute. So balancing that out with the other sciences you're producing in your factory is very much advised. First up, the rocket fuel. So we need the chemical plants for our solid fuel. And then I'm using direct insertion because you need 10 of these for each of the rocket fuel. So I'd much rather do that than have a whole bunch of belts going around. Even though in this case, the solid fuel is actually going to produce somewhat faster than these. And also the productivity modules, there are a couple of them to go with the speeds. And that's just to basically limit the amount we're gonna consume. There's a whole bunch of oil that's gonna be going into this process. And you can see they are gradually coming online over here as we use up more and more of what we have produced previously. Then we have our rocket control units down here. The speed modules going into the rocket control units. Each of these produces one every 15 seconds. These are on a 30 second timer. And so that allows each of these to supply two of the rocket control unit assemblers. Otherwise, it's pretty straightforward. We've got our processing units coming in here and coming out are the rocket control units and they combine up here with our fuel. And of course, we already had the low density structures. I've added a little bit more to the assemblers on those, but they're all set here. And all of this is now feeding in. If you look at our progress, okay, we're at 25, 26%. So this is gradually building. Now, if we never had any shortage, if we keep this amount up indefinitely, and that's not going to happen, by the way, because this is building it faster than the amount we're producing, but it would take a little less than nine minutes to build a rocket. And if you wanted to go faster than that, then you would want to probably build more rocket silos, or you could, I suppose, decide not to go with the productivity modules or something like that. But we are simply going to accept the fact that 20 minutes is more than fast enough. You can scale it up, of course, however you want. Now our rocket is fully built and ready to launch. It's not launching quite yet because we have auto launch with cargo set. We could manually launch it here as well. The cargo that it's expecting 
is the satellite, which is unlocked by researching the space science packs. And I just hand built one. If we were going to go the mega factory route, we would want to be able to take out the space science that we're going to get. And then we would also send that down to our factories. We would want to be automating producing satellites so they could be inserted with each rocket. But you only get the space science back if you launch this with a satellite. So we we'll put that in there and we will just wait. We can see the flame and engines building up and away it goes. And it flies, flies, flies until it goes out of sight. And we get our victory screen, which is pretty simple. Just the amount of kills we've got and the time that we've played. If you finish, it just takes you back to the main menu. Before we completely sign off, we should look at some other possibilities, as there are a couple of Easter eggs that are fairly well known, but it's worth exploring them regardless. We can turn off the auto launch here, put a car in, or any other vehicle for that matter, in the inventory, and we can get inside that. We just hit enter like we would hit to get into any vehicle, and then we launch it that way. Now we're not going to get any space science from this. So, in effect, it's a wasted launch, but the camera will follow the clamp falling off. The camera will follow the rocket as it goes. We get the same victory screen, and we are back here by the rocket. Now, one other possibility that is allowed for us to do is we could also simply put space science packs into that inventory, and then what will happen is we'll get fish back. Here is our final map that we ended up with. We got a iron outpost here as our last one that we cleared out that area with our Spider-Tron. But most of our big outposts that we set up are still there. This one's a little bit reduced, but it's still around. Tons of uranium left here, even this one here. You can see a lot of copper, probably about 75% of the initial amount still there. Our starting area, we did use up all of the iron in this location. The stone is lowered down, but still producing, and a tiny bit yet of coal, although it's almost gone, and copper has a little bit left with just this one miner, but pretty much we've moved outsourcing. And if you scale up further and further, you'd have to go out more and more, get more outposts, eventually start training in even stone and coal and all of that. So if you haven't had enough Factorio, where do you go from here? Well, if you go the Mega Factory route, a lot of people would suggest making a new game going into the rail world preset and that has further spread apart or patches but also much more numerous in terms of how much is in each patch and then the enemies don't expand and it's just a better suited way to go about the scaling up you need to do because we're ending up here at 50 science a minute i think the highest that's been done with the limits of modern personal computers running at decent speed is somewhere around 40,000 science a minute. So you just want to make it much larger. Those tend to be very much train based. You can make a mega factory that's based on belts, but most of them will be train based or some bots involved. And you would usually go a long ways away from where you start to begin it because the further you go away from your starting area, the larger the resource patches are going to be. Then there's also the overhaul mod scene. And there are a number of those. The general path for going up in those, they tend to just add more complexity, more things for you to do during the game, is Crestorio 2 is somewhat more complicated than Vanilla, but it's not a huge leap. Then Bob's Angels adds a whole ton of complexity. You'll often have six, seven different tiers of items instead of the three that Victorio tends to go with, and a lot more complications there. Space Exploration lets you go out to various different planets, not just on the one planet you start with. Then Payandan is just on Novice, but it's immensely complex. The amount of time we spent playing this would be to automate your very early science in that, and it generally takes several hundred hours for people to complete it, even if they really know what they're doing. And there are others, such as Nullius, Industrial Revolution, that you could explore. There are many, many different big successful mods that you can use to extend your gameplay as well. But I hope you've enjoyed the Factorio series. It's been fun to make. And thank you all for watching.
Take care.